welcome out in the woods which is the area I like to make my first you know first impression videos of my new knives and tools and the knife of the evening is this this is the Cheburkov Medved which you know translates to the Cheburkov bear and a bear is a beast and this knife too is quite quite the beast full titanium scales M390 blade probably my largest heaviest folder of them all this is pretty extraordinary in my humble opinion let me just change hand here real fast will you look at that look at those grind lines and let me tell you right away this edge this edge is super super sharp like surprisingly sharp at that it may not be like you know there are no no carbon fiber details or in a special you know Tamascus details or anything like that but you know just uh, just you know the, the the design the overall design and craftsmanship here there is no need for any any fancy details on a folder such as this it just is and I'm very much looking forward to making this video putting this knife to the test it is no doubt going to be a lot of fun that is for sure Let's see if we can get it in the sunlight get some nice nice shots of it like that yeah man what a beast of a knife holy crap so I mean it may not be you know much like with uh, with the Medford I got not long ago it may not be totally my style but I can definitely you know see myself using using this one putting it to a lot of hard work and tasks ah oh, man let's get going with this video the Cheburkov Medved the time has now come for some uh, unboxing action which to some might be you know pretty exciting for others uh, totally uninteresting and I know we have already seen the knife in the beginning of the video but I feel like an unboxing part is a, a important part of the, the video review of sorts so this is the box which you will get your your knife in in this case the Medved from Chiburko here we have some uh, Russian text which I don't fully understand uh, here we have some Russian text that I partially understand since it is uh, like telephone numbers and email address and uh, uh, web page so that is that is always something on the side here 
we get some information that I actually can read and it says Chiburkov, Medved, uh, Bear, M390, Titanium. So um, let's open this heavy, heavy box. You know it's gonna be a beast in it when it's this heavy. So this is the actual contents of the box. A knife and a plastic card here, which is the certificate of authenticity. If we remove the knife here, we can see that it is like a foam inlay here, uh, which of course works really nice securing the knife. There is nothing else in here. Just, you know, a box. So let's uh, put this aside for now. So, the certificate of authenticity here. The back part of it is some uh, maker's information, etc. Some signatures and a stamp. And uh, the front side here uh, shows the knife or the base model of the knife. Uh, if I had gotten this knife with a, a sort of la laminated uh, blade steel or Damascus blade steel or something other than a titanium handle, although I think you can only get this one with a titanium handle, but then it would still show the same photo because the photo shown on the certificate of authenticity always shows uh, the base model. Uh, just a, you know, for your information or if you feel like you got the wrong card with your, with your box, then it's good to know that it is, it is gonna be a photo that might not 100% correlate with the actual knife in the box. Uh, on the certificate of authenticity, you also get some uh, specifications of the knife here uh, and some other random text which I don't fully understand the meaning of. But I, I do like that they made it, you know, laminated or plastic like this, uh, like a more durable uh, than just a small paper clip or, or a small piece of paper. Uh, I will use this uh, certificate of authenticity to go over the specs here of the knife. This is a large, heavy knife. Uh, very different from my other folders, all of my other folders, aside from my Medford, which is also a large, heavy beast, but this one is probably even heavier than that. So let's take a look at uh, the specs here for this one. We have a overall length of 251 millimeters with a close length with a close length of 141 millimeters. So a fairly large knife, I'd say. We have a blade length here of 110 millimeters so fairly large blade as well and we have a blade thickness of four millimeters Let's see if that can be seen here and there is of course as you can see here there is a swedge grind going on here but we do see the full the full thickness of the blade here uh, the weight of the knife is something I really can't find uh, specified here on this card. Um, it should be specified somewhere on the card, but I can't find it. But I do have a solution of my own, which is bringing out uh, the scale here and putting it on, let's see. on why does it say there we go so this one weighs 200 and 208 grams uh, maybe I should actually do a control here to see yeah 208 grams so that should let most people know that this is a semi heavy folder So let's look at some of the um, other parts here that could be of interest. Uh, the handle is of course uh, completely in titanium with some uh, milling job here. Uh, probably to you know, get an extra good you know, grip etc. 
and probably for aesthetics as well. Um, but it could also be, you know, I was gonna say it could also make, you know, for hotspots, but I, I don't think, I do not think I'm gonna have a problem with hotspot, but you know, it, it could be for some people regarding on, on your hands, uh, this could potentially be uh, a comfort issue perhaps. But I doubt it. I actually, I have to say that I doubt it. It is, it is too rounded. It, there are no sharp edges. It's actually, this should not be of an issue to anyone. Uh, I'm gonna have to go, go and say that. I mean, it's, it's too, it's too rounded to actually be a, a issue of sorts. Uh, the blade steel here is uh, M390. So this is a real big chunk of M390. Um, on the spine here, or let's take a look here at the, at the blade here. So this is a um, a clip point designish, like a, a Bowie design of sorts, I'd say, with some really nice uh, nice uh, grind lines and swedge swedge uh, swedge lines or grind lines going on here. Not a super thin swedge too. Let's see if we can get it to show here. It's not like not sharpened. It's uh, not that that thin. Uh, to begin with. Uh, we have some jimping going on here on the spine. Actually, uh, actually uh, semi-aggressive, provides some good friction. Um, not too sharp, I'd say, uh, but functional. So, uh, the opening action is uh, Quite nice. Closing action is super nice. It actually it just drops shut uh, when you uh, when you close it, and that is of course also due to the actual weight here of the blade. This is a heavy knife and a heavy blade, so that makes it easier for it to uh, to drop shut, of course. But really, really smooth action. Um, it is a frame lock, as can be seen here, with a lockup of around, I'd say around 20% 20, 20 lockup, so quite, to me it looks quite secure. There is no blade play, no lock stick, and yeah, like I said, the action is, is quite, quite nice. Blade centering. Let's take a look here. The blade is 100% centered. Try to get it from all different angles. Nicely centered. Um, no uh, no lock rock or lock stick or anything like that and in terms of uh, size we should probably take a look at that I wear size 10 in gloves I have fairly large hands placing this knife in my hand like this we can see that the handle it is a large large handle you can fit like two more fingers here should you have that most of us do not but it does offer for you know a few different types of of grips here. Uh, although I like to choke up on the knife, place the thumb here on the spine, on the on the jimping. That is to me, um, you know, my preferred way of of holding a folder and this folder in particular as well. So have we forgotten to mention anything here? Uh, yeah, obviously you have a lanyard hole, hole here on the back. Uh, I am not, you know, the biggest fan of uh, lanyard holes in general. Or I mean, I don't, I don't really care. I don't use lanyards to any, you know, large extent or to any extent at all. But there are people who do uh, enjoy or that find, you know, lanyard holes to be essential. And for those people, well, here is your lanyard hole. Let's take a, once again, a closer look here at the grind lines. 
if we can get it to show in a nice way. Uh, a, a real, you know, beast workhorse of a knife. Feels like the type of knife you can, you know, batone with or chop with, etc. I'm never gonna chop with any of my folders. You will not see any chopping with this folder in this video. Uh, and probably no batoning either. But if I had to pick a knife to use for that sort of, uh, for that sort of work, I would most likely go with this one or with my Medfor because those two knives are built like tanks. So, uh, yeah, like a, a real hard-working uh, folder. Hopefully I haven't forgotten anything. Yeah, maybe like a balance point. If we look at that, I think not. Let's see where the balance point is on this one. I would think around here. So it is a bit front-heavy, obviously. No, I mean back heavy, not front heavy. But in hand, I mean, despite it not being, you know, like with a balance point here, it doesn't, you know, affect anything in hand or, you know, the feeling here. It feels, it feels pretty nicely, you know, uh, balanced or I feel like the balance point is where it should be on a knife such as this one absolutely so I think that's it for the for the unboxing and for the specifications of the knife the time has come to put uh, Medved to uh, its first test here we're gonna slice a few different kinds of paper. We're gonna start with some um, some regular printing paper, which can provide a ch challenge. Some knives, you know, have a difficult time getting fine cuts, uh, probably due to the paper uh, to the paper grind here. We're also gonna go with some uh, magazine paper, which is a totally different kind of paper, but still, you know, thin paper at that. And finally we are going to go with uh, some uh, uh, magazine paper which will or should of course provide uh, the absolute biggest challenge for the knife. So let's um, let's start with the, um, with the printing paper. So let's hope the wind doesn't catch the paper and we will start slicing it up to the best of the this edge ability. And it's gonna be interesting. That's a nice, that's a nice clean first cut. Now one, two. One small hiccup. I wouldn't say that this knife is doing some surprisingly fine work. I thought it was gonna be, you know, uh, kind of thick behind the edge and, you know, not really a great paper slicer at that. But this one, it really does slice the paper quite well, quite nice, quite clean overall. So I think we are, let's, let's this one be the last one. So I think we're done now. It uh, completely and utterly shredded the printing paper. And that is, I, I'm impressed because the printing paper can be, oh this piece can be made smaller. Printing paper can actually be a bit of a challenge. So this actually, this does impress me. Yeah, totally, totally, utterly 
shredded printing paper. Very, very good performance. I would probably rate it like a 9 out of 10, something like that. It was, it was a very good performance. Let's see how it can handle the magazine paper. Here we have the magazine. Let's find something. Let's see, let's just go like this, perhaps. Let's take this page and start. Oh, the wind is, wind is catching up here. Wind will be extra challenge. It's, I mean, it's really fine, clean cut. Oops. Let's remove this page and go for another. And we can try to do some... Uh, uh, some wavy moves to... to um, to challenge the edge just a tad bit more here. So let's see what we can do. Yeah, I will say that it can it can definitely do some some different wavy patterns while while um, cutting the paper. And then just take one final page and do some fast, fast cuts. Uh, wind. Ah. Okay, well, we'll just take that page as well. And two at the same time, why not? So I think that will be it for the magazine paper, which we pretty much completely shredded. Now I have some paper all over the all over the garden. But uh, it is what it is. So here is the shredded magazine paper once again this is i think this is pretty impressive especially from a knife like this um, i would probably rate this like a nine out of ten performance or perhaps even a 9.5 now it's time for the grand finale the newspaper paper. Let's see. So let's uh, let's do this. This, I, I realized that this might not look like, you know, like a super impressive thing, you know, slicing a random uh, newspaper like that. But this is, this is actually quite impressive because it's, it's such a, you know, special, special type of, um, of paper. And it's also a bit windy and a bit damper. So, I mean, Doing what I'm doing right now is, it's not something that all knives you buy can do, especially with the factory edge. Or, you know, like, well, factory edge, this is Chiburko, it's not really a factory, more like a, a custom knife maker of sorts. But this is just, this is, this is impressive, I'd say, you know, it's, it's, it is more impressive than what it looks like, you know making these sorts of uh, fine cuts and you know shredding newspaper paper like this to me this is impressive this is like i said this is a 
easily, easily a nine, nine out of ten, or perhaps even more performance from a knife like this. And then we have the edge retention of M390 as well. I mean, yeah, this is impressive stuff. Absolutely impressive. The time has come to put uh, Medved, the bear, to use in the kitchen. And uh, I mean, this is a large, heavy, stout knife. Not something I would typically see myself using in the kitchen or for food prep out in the fields, etc. But we do know that this knife is in fact a pretty good slicer of paper, different kinds of paper. But in terms of fruits and vegetables, I'm not so sure, or well, I am kind of sure it will do it well, but it, it's just that, you know, this knife, it's just not the, the, the type of knife I would go and get if I were to work in the kitchen and I wanted to use a, a folder for that. But uh, even so, I mean, I'm not saying it's not going to be an enjoyable experience. It might be very enjoyable and fun in some way, but it's not your typical kitchen knife or not my typical kitchen knife. So today we have two plates. We have one plate here with some different types of uh, vegetables. Uh, maybe I should say something like cucumber, paprika, aubergine and tomato. We also have a small fruit plate here with a bana banana, uh, apple, pear, some grapes and two oranges. So that is what we will be working with. And we're gonna start by doing some, uh, some vegetables here. I think we're gonna go with the paprika first, then we might go with the aubergine or the cucumber and after that we're gonna go with the tomatoes because those will probably be the most uh, challenging ones of the lot. So jello paprika, let's uh, slice it up. kind of wind now. I hope the, the tripod won't, uh, won't fail us. Let's see. Getting the seed house out of the way. And these small seeds which we do not want to eat because I don't think they are edible. Let's um, It's really picking up now, for sure. Go on even slightly deeper, like that. Well, I mean, so far, so far so good, right? Some seeds out here. Mm. Well, now we can start slicing, slicing them up a bit here. That. That. Like 
that. And then finally, So getting them like this was no big, you know, effort at all. Um, the knife is, is slicing really nice. Let's try to make these pieces into more uh, smaller bits here, or dicings. Can we get a ball? I mean, the blade like this is on the long side, so if we can just, you know, Punch them up and just go with everything. So, I will say that the bear did. Um, oh, there's one piece stuck in the little. There we go. The medvet here did uh, some quick work of the paprika, which is now completely uh, diced up here and ready to be placed on... Uh... Wait, here's one piece that wasn't completely sliced up. There we go. Ready to be placed here on the plate. My OCD wants to yeah, cut that in half. That was the paprika. Next up, we can do the the aubergine here. I think we're gonna go with half the aubergine because I need the other for uh, for my slicing test with the chiburko of eger. But let's do some uh, some random pieces here. Yes, I mean I, I wanted to go thin, you know, to save save some hair, but uh, I think I went a bit too far. So now we have a few pieces here. I can grab one more perhaps, and then we save this one. Then we can do like this. Like that. So we turn them into these sorts of, you know, pizza sh sliced shape things or pie shape, and then we add them to the to the plate as well here, nicely beside the paprika. And then we have some uh, some cucumber here. Oh, let's put this. Remove that part. So now we have some, uh, yeah, some pieces like that. I guess we could cut them up the same way we did with the with the aubergine. Perhaps not identically the same, but into smaller pieces like that. Place them beside the paprika on the other side or the opposite side. Oh man, this table is a bit low. I can feel it in the in my back here that it's not a 100% ergonomical position to be standing in. So now we have some slices like this. We can make some, you know, cucumber sticks here to uh, dip in, like, I don't know, tzatziki or something. Let's 
gonna be too small. And then we add this to the plate as well. A little cucumber sticks. And this one we can do some like yeah, small dices of sorts, perhaps. Like that, perhaps. Just, you know, dice them up a little. And then put them on the plate. Like that. So, this means we are now at, uh, at the final challenge in terms of uh, vegetables, which is uh, the tomato. Two of them, to be precise. So let's start by doing some um, full, uh, full round pieces. That one we can remove. So, that was quite easy to slice it up. I didn't go super thin, but uh, even so, um, yeah, it was kind of, uh, or, or it was effortless, not kind of, it was, it really was effortless. So, that is a good thing. quite watery. So let's do some other stuff with this one. Uh, let's do like this. This one was a lot less watery, so it's easier to work with. Then we can do some uh, dicing, perhaps. Yeah, pretty much just, you know, dicing it up like that. And then putting it on the fruit plate here. And we can place these on the fruit plate as well. So this is now what we have. Oops. Uh, so it, it does look, it's not, you know, it doesn't look very nice, but uh, well, at least we sliced up some uh, some vegetables with ease using the medved. Next up is the the fruit plate. See what we can start with. We're gonna start with this uh, banana here. Um, not entirely sure what we're gonna do with it. Um, gonna remove some tomato water here first. I don't believe in the combo of tomato and banana. So let's just start by slicing a bit here. I know that no one, no normal person would do like this. But this is a sharpness test. So 
So let's uh, try something else. Let's place this over here. Still some random slicing here. Yeah, I mean this is totally random stuff, but yeah. Oops, that wasn't too nice. Yeah, my bad, I'm gonna throw this away. So, yeah, I have no clue what we're gonna do with that, but it's just, you know, some, some random slicing. Mm -hmm. Let's remove this part. And then we can do some Yeah, so this is uh, this is one way to um, slice up a um, a banana if you want to. Let's place these random pieces here on the plate. A very different fruit plate. Something like that. So uh, next up. I think we're gonna continue slicing things. The, the things we're gonna slice in strange ways are the things we're gonna go with now. So let's take this and uh, this pear. Remove the top part here. Yeah, slicing too way too thin. Well, um So this is a totally sliced up here. Did pretty quick work of it. Let's place it here. Mm. Trying to build this in a fruit plate, but it's uh, it's not gonna be that beautiful. Pretty much the same or or a lower standard compared to the vegetable table we just or vegetables plate we just did that wasn't you know really that fancy looking let's go with uh, this is something i forgot to place on the plate here but uh, this is a kiwi and we're gonna slice it up as well in uh, this cm is strange fashion maybe we can do something else with this final part of it like so this one we can throw away 
let's try to get the, the actual meat here out of the remove the non-edible peel be a tiny bit of peel left here absolute tiniest pieces here there we go this is actually that let's do the same here you know this this part here is uh, messing things up a little bit. I have to try to go over it. Yeah, you can see here, this is the really hard part. Slice this up a bit. Yeah, something like that, I don't know. This one can probably be made into two pieces. It doesn't run away. Come on, you stupid little kiwi piece. There we go. So, um, yeah, kind of random. Everything is kind of random in this fruit salad, so. Let's put it here. So next up we're gonna go with uh, with some grapes and I think that everyone that eats grapes they probably cut them in tiny pieces uh, because they are of course so large. There we go. This one looks kind of sad. Take that one away. So let's start by just slicing, uh, slicing a few of these up here. Uh, Really good grape slicer, absolutely. Let's cut them in some other ways as well. Yeah. Let's do like this as well. You know, I was joking here before saying that this knife would not be, you know, something I pick in the kitchen and, and I mean, I, I still probably would not pick this one in the kitchen, but you can't, you know, argue that it is, it is a pretty good slicer. I'm gonna place all these small... can't get everything to fit here but I mean when it does this to a grape in mere seconds and these are all really thin pieces I mean this knife it will slice you can absolutely use this one in the kitchen no doubt about that absolutely not So the grape massacre is uh, now over and the grapes will be placed on the 
on the plate. So Now we have two fruits left. Uh, one is an apple and uh, the other uh, oranges. So let's go with, uh, with this red apple now. You know, with a thick knife like this, I'm, I'm thinking it might break the apple apart here rather than cut it apart, but it did not, it actually did not break. It is, it is nicely, nicely cut here. Now we're gonna try to remove uh, the seed house without breaking the entire apple apart here. That might be a little bit of a challenge, but we actually managed to do it. It's not much of a seed house, this piece here, but I'm gonna remove what little we have. So, there we go. And then we're gonna start uh, cutting this up here. So now we have some, um, some pieces here that would work uh, quite well for, uh, or well they are too thin perhaps, but that would almost work well for, for an apple pie. But I was going for, for, for making you know, as, as many as, as possible. Uh, and not, you know, I'm not, probably not going to make an apple pie with this. Or maybe I am. So let's uh, place these over here. In my fruit salad or fruit plate. not gonna be no masterpiece this plate um. so let's um, yeah let's make some some thicker pieces here maybe make some you know dicing of them Pretty much like this, and make some. Yeah. So just some, you know, yeah, diced up apple pieces, like this. And then we put them. Um, somewhere on the plate here. It's getting kind of stuffed here. And we still have some more to put it to put on. So let's see. Now we have finally reached the grand finale of sorts. Which is of course uh, the oranges and I'm gonna use one and a half orange because I need the other half for um, 
for another slicing test uh, with uh, actually with the Chiburkov uh, Eger. But let's start with this one. Um, great tip test, right? So let's uh, go full slices here. Remove this part. Cutting right through the seeds. Can't feel the seeds when I cut. But I can't see them. This is definitely going to be the last one. Or perhaps that was the last one. So how many did we get? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces. Uh, not too bad. It wasn't very hard slicing the uh, the orange. Now we just going to have to fit them on the plate. That's probably gonna be harder than the actual slicing. Yeah. Something like that. And then we will do some, um, like I said, I'm gonna save one half. some regular slicing like this. The wind sure is picking up right now. So now we have some uh, some pieces like that. Perhaps you could make this into uh, and it's a thin piece. So I'm just gonna place it here somewhere on um, on the fruit plate in some fancy way which is more or less impossible to be fully honest. so let's uh, let's take a look at what we have accomplished with uh, with this beast of a folder that I definitely didn't think would be you know a kitchen companion of any sort but I, 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 I did know of course that it was a sharp knife so um, but this is what the fruit plate looks like uh, kind of random to be honest but I mean yeah it's a sharpness test so let's place the fruit plate over there and then we have the vegetable plate. It looks really sad and boring this one. I, I wish I could have done something more here, but uh, yeah, it is It is what it is like I usually state so um, Yeah, the medwed will work surprisingly nice in the kitchen uh, This is a sharp knife. It will slice through all kinds of peels and seeds and uh, fruit, meat, or whatever. And it may be a bit thicker behind the edge than, for example, the Goodson or uh, the Ruski, or the Eger for that matter. But not something that really, you know, shoves in this test anyways. And the thicker spine here is not, you know, a great issue either. Uh, I think the apple was a good test, you know, cutting it through without it actually breaking apart. So, uh, I will say that this is a surprisingly good knife to to use in the kitchen, but I would still pick the Goodson or the Ruski over it because it is a lighter alternative. It is slightly more comfortable in the hand, and I mean you don't need this kind of jimping etc. When when working in the kitchen, but uh, even so, this one will will work well. 
And if out in the fields, I mean, this one would work really good for, for random food prep in the woods or, you know, out camping or hiking, etc. So, uh, yeah, this is, this is it for the fruit and vegetable slicing. On the table we have some wood pieces, which means we are now uh, venturing away from fruits and vegetables, soft things, into a bit more harder stuff here. And I've been, you know, I've been thinking about what I was gonna put this knife through, if I was gonna go, you know, uh, woodwork, carving, maybe even like batoning, etc. We're not gonna do any batoning, definitely no chopping, but I, I, I'm still, you know, I'm still debating what to put this knife through and uh, I mean I do want to try making some feathers at the very least but I might also take this one with me out in the woods to do some some carving and uh, uh, making some notches etc um, so uh, but we, we will just have to see but this is this is a must because I want to test the, I really want to test the edge to see how fine uh, or if we can make feathers uh, you know it did excellent in the in the paper slicing, and it did excellent in the in the vegetable and fruit slicing. So I, I hope I hope we can make some um, some nice stuff here as well with um, with this one. So let's uh, let's pick out a wood piece here, and then we can start making some uh, some feather. So here we have a piece of wood. And uh, hopefully we can make some uh, some semi-nice feathers that are also visible in the camera. Yep, first feather made. Not too shabby looking, I'd say. Let's see if we can start, you know, building a a bouquet of sorts here with feathers that are actually sticking to the um, to this piece of wood here So this is where we are currently at. Some pretty nice feathers, I'd say, that are actually also attached. Yeah, some some stuff has fallen off here, obviously, but most of the feathers are are intact and are still attached here. So maybe we should actually remove this and take a um, a closer look at it. So this is... Yeah, I'm gonna go with some of these loose feathers as well. They will be part of the... Of the bouquet. So these are the feathers we made with the medved. It's really hard for me to see the camera, but I, I know it is visible. So this would actually work really well uh, to get a fire started. Uh, no doubt about that. Some nice fine curls, etc. You might need a bit more, but uh, yeah, this will work just fine. Making a, a fire with. 
So this knife is actually sort of full of surprises. It made some really nice feathers and I, I mean it did some really good slicing performances in terms of both paper and fruits and vegetables. I mean this knife is... Uh, there's more than meets the eye here, definitely. As you guys can see we are once again out in the woods, a beautiful beautiful nice evening or well it's well it's more like four o'clock so I guess it's a few hours left until until the evening but it is a very nice afternoon absolutely uh, and this is you know the setting we started this video off with out in the woods uh, under almost the same circumstances it was a bit colder when we started the video review uh, today it is more like a, a hot summer day but tomorrow it might be like spring or uh, autumn. That's the weather here right now. Anyways, uh, the medved or the bear should of course be out in the wild. And right now we're gonna record the two final segments here of this uh, semi-comprehensive video review. We're going to make some um, uh, carving, wood carving and some notches and after that we're gonna try to you know summarize or I'm gonna try to summarize my thoughts and come up with some sort of uh, conclusions uh, for this beastly beastly large knife um, probably the knife I feel the most comfortable out of all my folders here uh, to, to use out in the woods uh, it just feels you know it feels unbreakable uh, but I'm sure it's possible to break it if you really try to but it is you know it is a tank so let's uh, let's get the camera a bit closer and then we can start working with some uh, different uh, tweaks and sticks and yeah let's uh, let's go ahead here and pick a piece of wood I'm not sure exactly which type of wood we will go with and I'm gonna step up here and go closer to the camera so you can actually see what I'm doing but let's go with, uh, yeah, we have a few different kinds here, but we're gonna go with this one, uh, which is, uh, or, or we could, we should go with a few different types of, of trees here. But this is, um, to me, an unknown wood type. Um, but we also have some birch, fir, pine, etc. But let's start with this one and make a, a barbecue skewer of sorts. Holy crap, yeah, I mean, yeah, that was fairly quick. I, what I actually wanted to do was to remove the top part and then start making the skewer here. And I still think I'm gonna do that, but holy hell, I mean, this was, uh, yeah, it made super quick work. Let's uh, remove that part so we can start from like, start from the very beginning. So now we have a more, you know, a more fresh start of sorts. So let's uh, let's cut away here. Hopefully we are in focus. Perhaps not. Slicing machine. Wood slicing machine. I mean, honestly. I feel like I'm working with a with a fixed blade, you know, like a almost like a dedicated bushcrafting fixed blade of sorts, not a a super large compact folder uh, like that. Yeah, we shouldn't go much thinner because it will not be able to hold like a a hot dog or whatever it is you plan to. Uh, to put here on the on the skewer here of sorts, but that was uh, super easy work. Holy crap! Let's go for notches now here. Let's do a notch right below here. Cut into the. Then we're gonna remove a bit. Uh, 
Yeah, quick work. It's gonna be quite a deep, maybe a bit, yeah, it's it's a bit too deep even. But look at that. It's a pretty nice notch, yeah, it doesn't look super even on the inside. We can even it out with ease like that. Now it is completely even. Super smooth, of course. Yeah. Holy hell, yeah, this was actually surprisingly um, impressive. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say this again here, the Medved here, it's a nice, it's a knife full of nice surprises. Uh, I mean, the, uh, as we started with the paper slicing, all three types of paper, all the fruits and vegetables, making feathers, etc. Now we're making barbecue skewer and notches, and this knife just keeps delivering. I mean this one, man, I'm, I'm really enjoying this one. I'm enjoying all my knives from Chiburko, but this one has been the most interesting one I think to work with, because it's the one knife that surprised me the most. Um, we do have some other types of, of trees and wood here as well, so we could give that a go. Uh, see, some of these are kind of unknown to me. This one is definitely fur as well. Now let's go with uh, this is a, a semi thick piece of uh, uh, pine. So let's go with uh, let's go with that one now. See what we can do. Yeah, man, this one is. Yeah, I mean, look at that. Ouch, it's quite pointy. Really, really pointy. This is a real woodwork knife. Holy hell, and it's also surprisingly comfortable working with, uh, doing these sorts of tasks. The only thing that's not super comfortable is actually opening the knife up here. Uh, I've done that too much and my finger is actually starting to get a bit sore uh, due to the blade being kind of heavy. So you do need to do this in a flick movement almost to, to put some ease on your thumb. But anyway, uh, this was uh, some really good stuff here. Uh, like I said, this is pine. We can try to make a notch here in the pine as well. Let's go over here. These pieces. Yeah, this is definitely a deep enough notch, 100%. So here we go. Notch in uh, in pine.
smooth, deep, and hard. Yeah, it is knife. It is a beast and it lives up to its name, but it's also in a fine slicer at that. Interesting knife. We're gonna get more into that in the in the final thoughts and conclusion here. Yeah, you wanna take my spot? Come on, side. So, here we are, the setting that I picked to um, record my final thoughts and conclusions. Uh, I know I have the sun directly behind me and that I probably appear as a, you know, just a dark silhouette or, or a shadow of sorts. Uh, but you have seen enough, well, you ha actually you haven't seen that much of me, but you have seen some of me and I don't think that I am the most interesting thing to look at. Uh, not like this at least. And we have seen the, the Chaburkov quite a lot, uh, the Chaburkov. The Chaburko Medved, the bear, quite a lot here. Uh, and you know, I've been thinking about this <laughs> final thoughts and conclusions, uh, especially about this blade, because I've been reviewing the Chaburko Goodson, the Chaburko Ruski, and the Chaburko Eger. Uh, but this is probably the most interesting final thoughts and conclusions uh, for a few different reasons. And I'm gonna say right away here that I've been using this folder and a few others quite a lot here these last couple of days. And I'm finally starting to get a little bit sore in my finger here, in my flipper tab finger. And this one does require a bit of strength to open up, especially like, you know, if you look down, you get, you know, the gravity to work for you. Uh, flicking the hand a bit will also help, of course, but opening it up like that is, uh, you know, for my, my finger, it is, I'm gonna give it a try here now, but my finger, actually hurts uh, a little bit. And I'm not gonna blame it all on this folder because I've been playing around with, uh, with quite a few folders these last couple of days, making different videos and just, you know, just working a little bit with. But uh, yeah, there we go. So uh, that, is, that is one thing to address, I guess, to begin with here, that uh, this knife is, uh, you know that this knife is uh, on the heavy side, uh, that it is a large knife, etc. And that does, of course, require a bit of strength to open it up. Uh, so I mean if you if you sit and play around with this knife like opening and closing it for uh, 50 or 100 or 150 times uh, on a single day then your finger might get sore. Uh, but you can also actually open it without using the flipper tab. You can just grab hold. Maybe I should actually get a bit closer here. You can actually just grab hold since there is so so much of the blade here or the spine. You can grab hold of it and just open it like that should you want to. So I mean the flipper tab is not 100% uh, uh, needed but you cannot open it one-handedly because there is no fuller, there is no uh, thumb, um, uh, thumb stick or anything. There is, you know, it's just clean surface but you can still open it like that. Uh, although I mean I really want to use the flipper tab. Uh, I like to open my hand uh, knives one-handed. Oh, you are really wet. So, uh, enough about uh, the flipper tab and opening the knife. Yeah, the flipper tab does have some jimping as well, and that is, you know, yeah, you get some marks on your fingers after a while. But this is not a big issue uh, to me. And uh, this final thoughts and conclusion is actually going to be uh, a lot of praise, because this knife, I was, you know, unsure when I ordered it. Uh, I initially ordered four knives. I ordered a Chaburkov Eger, uh, which is a fixed blade, I ordered uh, three folders. The Ruski, the Goodson and this one. And this was the one I you know, was the most unsure about. Uh, but having, you know, having messed around with it now for, uh, for a few weeks, I will say I got it... Yeah, it is a few weeks ago. Uh, I, I will say that I'm super happy I decided to, to try it out. It, is, it may not be totally my style, but it's been quite, uh, you know, quite a ride here. Uh, I was unsure about how, you know, how practical this knife would actually be. But, you know, starting from the, actually starting from the unboxing when I first, you know, held it in hand, opened it up, you know, felt it like, wow, this is, uh, this is quite something, you know, and the blade design and the knife, you know, the complete knife design here, it just felt like, you know, this is, it may not be your style, Frederick, but this is one hell of a, 
an interesting knife and I hope it will perform. Uh, and I mean, starting with, uh, with the paper slicing, man, did it impress me. It sliced, you know, it sliced those papers insanely well. All three types, uh, you know, shredding the, uh, the newspaper paper like, you know, like, like laser almost. It was incredibly, I was incredibly impressed by the performance, absolutely. Then we went on with, uh, with uh, food prep, slicing the vegetables, slicing the, uh, the fruits. And once again, this knife did, it, did an impeccable job. It sliced through everything we, we put to it. Uh, I mean, there was no hiccups, no nothing. It just, you know, it, it performed really well. And the ergos actually worked quite well uh, in, the, in the kitchen too. You know, I was a bit unsure about a milling job here, you know, that it would be like the grooves here would be uncomfortable or, the, you know, the, the jimping would be too aggressive perhaps. But having used this knife quite a lot, I am, I am very impressed. And then today we went out into the woods to try some, uh, or well, first we did some feather sticks. And this one, boy, did it make feather sticks. It made really nice, really, really nice feather sticks. And after that, we went out in the woods and did some, uh, some random wood carving, making some you know, barbecue skewers or spear tips, uh, notches, etc. And it just kept performing. So I mean, this, uh, and it, I mean, it's built like a tank. I feel like it's indestructible, uh, that I can batoon with it, that I could chop with it, should I want to, but I don't really want to. But having this knife in, in your backpack when out in the woods or out camping or you know, just you know, whatever, I would feel, you know, super confident that it can do anything that I, I want from it. You know, it, 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 it's a, a real all-around, like an all-around camp knife or, you know, camp kitchen knife. Something you can really rely on in all types of situations. And that is actually pretty cool. Like I said, when I did a woodwork, it felt like I was uh, working with a... Uh, uh, with a fixed blade of sorts actually so I mean yeah this knife was I was really taken by it uh, I love you know I love everything about it pretty much I just wish it was you know I wish it was as as large as it is with the exact same specifications and everything just a tad bit lighter and and slightly easier to open then it would have been absolutely perfect but I mean those are minor things when you look at the whole picture. So this knife is, I would say that this was the biggest surprise out of all the knives. Uh, I'm not saying it is the best knife, but in some sense it might actually be. But my favorite folder is still going to be the Chiburkov uh, uh, Goodson. That is my favorite Chiburkov knives out of all the ones that I've tried. But I guess that this one should be placed, you know, on, the, on like second place or something like that. Uh, perhaps together with the other because they all have their, their pros and cons but but the, the Medved this is a really interesting knife you know I had I never expected to like it as much and I had definitely not expected it to to uh, uh, perform the way it did in all of the tests we did with it fantastic blade and it's so I mean it's just let's take a final look at it here but it's gonna be Oh yeah, we should we should redirect the camera, but we can still see the you know the blade shape here, the silhouette of it. Man, it's so. I I love this knife, such an, an interesting knife, and you know I'm I'm so happy I decided to go with it. I can definitely see myself getting a, a spare one, a backup one, perhaps in some uh, some laminated steel instead of M390, just to have some variation to it. Uh, but in terms of handles, I think they only make it in, in full titanium. Now that I think about it, and I think I mentioned it before in the video, uh, there is a new version of this one with a fuller to it, so maybe I should try to grab, grab one of those as well. Uh, but I kind of like the clean lines here with no fullers. It's just, you know, it's, it's a really nice knife. I like it quite a lot, and I highly recommend it as well if you're looking for a true true powerful workhorse, a tank of a knife that will still slice really nicely.